In this video we've listed the most important tips you shouldn't miss before your trip to Lisbon. These are crucial tips so that you don't get into any trouble during your trip or any serious difficulties in Portugal and so that you can enjoy your trip as much as possible to make your vacation worthwhile in a way that you'll never forget. So these are some great tips guys, give us a like, subscribe to the channel and let's go! Hey guys, for those who don't know me, I'm Gabriel Lorenzi, creator of the Grupo Dicas, the largest travel content network in the world. And today we're going to talk about Lisbon. What are the main tips you should know before traveling there? There are some very important tips, guys, that are people who don't know and who go through a lot of hassle and trouble during their trip. So stay tuned, we've listed the top 10 so you can enjoy your trip in the best possible way when you go to Portugal, Lisbon. So let's go! The most important tip of all and the one that will help you avoid problems and high costs is the time of the year when to travel to Lisbon. If you've already booked your trip, don't worry, you can make the most of these tips, but if you haven't set a date yet, the European summer dates for all the city, especially in Portugal, Lisbon and the Algarve, the high season is in summer, so June, July and August are the busiest and most expensive months. July and August mainly in September a little more than halfway through because every Everyone travels there, everyone has school vacations, so these cities all over Europe, the more touristy ones like Lisbon and Porto, the beach towns like the beaches in the Algarve get much more crowded and it's much more expensive. You can go, you can enjoy it, but if you can avoid it and you want summer, you want the beach, try the end of September or the beginning of June, you will pay a lot less, everything will be much emptier and you will be able to enjoy it just as much. But if you really want the summer excitement, or only have those months then fine go in July we went at the end of August it was crowded but we managed to enjoy it it was an incredible trip so that's the tip for the season winter which is November December and January I think gets in the way of getting to know the cities Lisbon the beaches if you're planning to go to the beaches off the Algarve forget it you can go you will walk around in a jacket but it's quite cold there and in the city of Lisbon you won't be able to see that much of the landscape in the Sun and in enjoy it by walking this part about walking a lot you walk a lot in Lisbon so the cold can get in the way a little bit so the perfect time to visit is September October November and then February March April May March April and May are so perfect so make a note of it because this tip about the time of the year is what interfere with almost all of your trip planning guys because if you get high season things are going to be very expensive and the question we get the most is that people sometimes have problems at the time what do i need to take to travel to portugal to be able to enter the country it's very easy there you only need your passport you have to have a valid passport you don't need a visa and you also need travel insurance this is mandatory for the whole of europe including portugal but it's very cheap we have a website that we discovered a few years ago i'll leave it here in the description of the video and down here in the first fix it comment it's a travel insurance comparator it compares you put in the date of your trip for Europe it compares all the insurance and shows you the best prices the best offers and the prices are half as much as if you went directly to a travel agency that insurance company so take a look use the comparator which is very good and then you need to take out travel insurance that has medical assistance cover of at least 30,000 euros so get one for 35,000 euros to make sure then you can get in with peace of mind I'd also advise you to take proof of accommodation from your hotel to prove that you're staying there it's very uncommon for them to ask but they might and how much you're bringing for the trip they want to know that you have at least an average of 70 euros a day to support yourself with food transportation so take your global digital account statement take either your cash with the right amount in your head so you can tell them when you're there or your credit card print out the statement that has your name on it but that's it you go in and enjoy it without any further problems 
Another tip on which cities to visit in Portugal, everyone immediately thinks of Lisbon, which is the most popular city in Portugal. Everyone immediately thinks of Lisbon, which is the most visited. In my opinion, if it's your first time in Portugal, Lisbon is the most important. You can't leave it out of your itinerary. Lisbon has a lot to do, so I recommend at least five days there to make the most of it. And then there are other things you can do. Porto is a beautiful city just over an hour from Lisbon. It's a nice city that's worth spending three or two days in. In. There's an itinerary that people do from Lisbon and Porto and they go to another country, France or Spain, which is just next door. Or you can also go down to the beaches of the Algarve. We did this trip and it was beautiful. The beaches are much quieter and calmer than those in Spain and Ibiza that in the sea is a little colder, but they are beautiful beaches. The scenario is beautiful. It's worth it. If you go in the summer from June to September, don't forget the beaches and focus on the touristy part up there. And one important thing that many people don't know and they end up missing during the things are the cities near Lisbon that are incredible to visit and you can do day trips around I'm going to talk about the main ones that would take up to two days of your trip but it would make your trip much more comfortable you guys these are incredible tours that will add a little something to your trip to Portugal the first day trip I think it's sensational we did it with an agency it's to Obidos, Fatima and Nazaré Obidos is a more medieval town Fatima is the town where our lady of Fatima was seen and all that history around its temple of Fatima this is more if your religion is based on the Catholic Church on the Christian Church it's very worth visiting and Nazaré is also worth visiting because of its religious significance it's a very nice city the great thing is that you can do all three in the same day there's a website I'll give you the link it's the website we buy all the tours and excursions in Europe and it's one of the best prices it has several currency options Options for payment so it's cheaper than making other international purchases with a card it's very good we only recommend very good registered agencies so all the tours we bought there were great they pick you up from your hotel and they take you in a van a super nice bus show you everything the guide helps you with everything so it's a spectacular tour well worth putting on your itinerary and for a second day trip and excursion is Cascais there's a very nice tour on this website that we did there is also a palace that's worth a visit it's a beautiful incredible place when you enter you see that it's a city with several very cool medieval castles all loaded and colorful you go for a walk they already know the best spots for you to stop and take pictures it's a great experience and it's only 30 minutes from Lisbon a lot of people don't know it then only go to Lisbon we did that the first time on our first trip you just go to Lisbon visit the tourist center and that's it and there are all these much cooler and cultural things around that people don't know about they are cheap tours that you will see are inexpensive and everything things close by quickly and easily so take a look and a free tip we love free things there's a city tour on this website they do a tour that's free so choose the free Lisbon tour for your first day you take a free tour and get to know the main sites you will spend two hours walking around the tourist center and a person will explain the whole story to you you get to know it in general on the first day and of course it's free but they want to attract people to sell other tours later and people always tip the guide because the guide will be there working in they are super friendly and explain everything at the end of the tour people usually tip 10 euros 15 euros something like that depending on the size of your family how many people you have but you will see that everyone gives a little tip it's a very nice free tour to take and learn more about Lisbon's history it's very good guys and it's always good to tip the guide it's a uh, custom they have and the tour is free so you get like 10 or 15 euros maybe a little more if you have a big family but in general it's no cost at all Another important tip in Portugal is accommodation. Where to stay? Try to stay close to the tourist center. It makes a lot of difference. You can often find neighborhoods spread out, especially in Lisbon and Porto, which are big cities. People, you can't get too far away from things. You spend money, you spend time, you can get to places, but it's not worth it because there are so many hotel options, guys. So take a look. We'll leave it here in the video description. We made a link. I link to a personalized map that already has all the hotels included so you can see the best region in Porto and the best region in Lisbon I'll put it here on the map so you can see the best area in Lisbon staying here you're close to everything we stayed in a hotel and we did everything on foot we rarely took an uber we even walked to the Belém Tower which is a bit further away it's an hour's walk along the waterfront along the promenade which is busy on the side it's super 
beautiful a beautiful scenario you get to see the sights it's worth it you hardly spend any money on transportation so focus on choosing a good cool location i'll also give you the link of the two hotels we stayed in they're very good the one in lisbon and the one in porto incredible hotels with excellent value for money and in the best location we went out into the street and we were already near rua augusta in the restaurants bars in praza do comercio it's the perfect location both in lisbon porto and algarve as well Another important tip, many people who go to Lisbon end up splitting the Belém Tower into one day and then going to the Jerónimo Monastery in the next. They're very close to each other, so the tip is to take a day to get to know the whole area of Belém, which has the Belém Tower, the Jerónimo's Monastery, a Pastel de Belém restaurant, which is the most famous restaurant selling Pastelzinho de Belém, the famous Pastel de Belém. Everything is close by, you can do it all on foot. So use a day to get there, which takes about 25 minutes by car, about 15 minutes walking, and it's a bit far from the city of Lisbon, so focus on these attractions in Belém one day and then focus on the castle of São Jorge, which is in the tourist center and the oceanarium, which is very cool. It's a gigantic aquarium, well worth a visit, the Santa Luzia viewpoint where you can see the whole city. It's a beautiful view and it's super charming, we loved it. It was the most enjoyable walk and it's free. You go up there, just put in Miradouro Santa Luzia and you can get to the top. So there are three tourist attractions that you can do in the same day to optimize your travel time the division of tourist attractions by region really helps you optimize your travel time you enjoy your days more renting a car in Porto if you're only staying in Lisbon I don't think it's worth it guys but let's talk about the car rental as I said, renting a car in Portugal, if you're only staying in Lisbon, it's not worth it. Now, if you're going to do the other cities, if you want to go to Bordo, Coimbra, Braga, you can do lots of nice routes. The car is super cheap and one of the cheapest in Europe. It's cheaper than other destinations. Portugal and Italy are the cheapest destinations to rent a car and you can travel around in peace. We rented a car from Lisbon to go to the Algarve and do a seven-day tour of the Algarve's beaches. It was an incredible experience and it's super simple and easy to drive. All you need is a valid driver's license. A credit card is also available and you can rent a car. If you're renting, use the price comparator. It's an incredible tool that compares the price at all the rental companies and gives you the cheapest prices. Cheaper than if you went directly to the rental company. Use the comparator that I'll leave here in the description and you will save a lot and search and you will see that price of the car is very cheap. And there are trains. I'll also give you the website we use to buy train tickets in Europe. The trains there work really well. They're fast, they're good, you can always use them. You will see which is cheaper if you take the train or rent your car. You can do the math, but the train is also great if you want to go to Porto. The train journey from Lisbon to Porto is super easy. You can also go by car, you just have to work out the cost depending on how many people are going. Do your research and you will find the best way to travel there. And an important tip is that many people are hesitating and spending money for nothing. It's about how to take and buy your euros, guys. I'm going to get into detail, guys, about what to do with your cash in the next part. And that's it guys, I hope you liked the video, if you like it, please don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to the channel because that really helps us a lot. And don't forget to watch the other videos which are very good, there's what to do in Lisbon, our Garvey itinerary, Portugal's main itinerary, there's where to stay in Porto, what to do, there's everything. I'll leave the two playlists with all the tips on Portugal here for you to continue watching, so thank you very much guys and have nice trips, see ya!